Louise and I would like to welcome you uh, to Living Happy Ever After. The, the reason we can do this with such uh, uh, affluence is because we've had 40? Oh, almost 40 years. <laughs> almost 40 years of it. Uh, I, I've often wondered <laughs> uh, when poor old Adam went to sleep, uh, and when he woke up, he, he saw the most amazing thing he'd ever seen. He saw a woman. He saw a beautiful specimen there that looked, looked more beautiful than lions and tigers and all the things that he had. Uh, he, here he had a woman, beautiful long hair. Uh, she didn't start in as a baby. She was full grown. And as we said before, uh, God didn't make her out of mud like he did Adam. Uh, he made her out of real flesh. And so she was much more beautiful uh, than Adam. What a day. That first day. Oh, it's just <laughs> exciting to read that first chapter of Genesis and yeah. on through there, what God did in the beginning. Uh, first things are always exciting. You know, the first day we were married, well, London, Ontario, oh. and then, then we were together and we were alone in our car and we drove over to Niagara Falls to begin our honeymoon. Hey, hey, hey. Well, it was all beautiful, <laughs> September the 30th, uh. and uh, what a beautiful time of the year it was and how beautiful the falls is, where is the honeymooner's paradise. Yeah. But it, it was lovely, and we stayed in what they called the honeymoon cabins. You know, uh, first things, like your first car, it, it don't matter, you know, how old a thing might be. If it's your first one, you just want to pat it and love it and, you know, take care of it. First things are always exciting. Uh. Yes, you've, there's a lot of different, it's a different life. Yeah. <laughs> you have to learn to know that person and their likes and dislikes and when they want to eat and when they want to study and uh, everything uh -oh. about it. You're talking about me here. Yes. Everybody better hear that. <laughs> when I study at 2 o'clock in, in the morning and, and things like that, it's a little, it is a little different. Uh, we want you to know that God loves a family and, and that, that you are part of the family of God and God wants us together, and that you're, you're human family. God wants it to be together. He wants it to be happy. It's God's will that you have a happy family. How do you make a happy family? Mommy, have a seat over here and let's have some coffee. Well, I, I'll let you do the pouring if you don't mind. All right. And uh, we'll, we'll have some coffee. And, and shall we begin at the beginning? We often do that, and so why don't we start over again? If you have a Bible there, why don't we do a little reading? Well, if you don't mind, we'll begin in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 22 that says, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Mom, what do you say about that? Well, I like that <laughs> verse, except I don't like the word thing, findeth a good thing. Uh -oh. But yet it was Solomon that wrote it, and so <laughs> we understand. Maybe it was a poor translation. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> he, findeth, he, he findeth a good beauty. Yes. A good companion. Yes, that sounds better. A Much good help better. Meet. God called it a help meet. Yes. Well, yeah, poor old Solomon, he didn't do everything and right. And you know, I think very few couples really realize that. Yeah. That word help meet. Yeah. These days. Yeah. That whoso findeth a wife findeth a beautiful help meet. Now that's what it says in Proverbs, and that was Solomon talking. In Ecclesiastes, the same gentleman said, Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of your vanity. The, uh, the, the life could be of its emptiness, you know, we, we know there's a termination point, we know it's going to end and so forth, which he hath given thee unto the Son all the days of your life. For that is the portion in this life, in, in your labor which thou taketh under the Son. I'd like for us to move into the New Testament in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 33 says, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. I believe that's the secret of a happy, happy home, is when we love each other as we love ourselves. I must be as interested in your pretty clothes as I am in my pretty clothes. Are you interested in my suits? Oh, I, I really like to see you, you wear the, the nice things that you have to be on television so much and you're in the pulpit well, and the I, platform. Well, I like to see you pretty, too. Well, thank you. Yeah. So th that's what the Bible is teaching us, that we must, you know, we must care for... You don't have divorces when you care for one another. It's when you lose something that you have a divorce. And God doesn't want you to lose your first things. Your first, your first love, he said, to hold on to it. Your first wife, you're supposed to hold on to her. She's supposed to hold on to you. And you are supposed to be happy ever after. I believe in that. Do you believe in that too? Oh, I certainly believe it because it's the Word of God. 
If it's the word of the Lord, then I, I certainly believe it's true. Uh, if you would pr permit me, and, and did you get any coffee? Well, yes, I had. I finished mine. If you'll have yourself a little more coffee, I'll be back. All right. I'll, I'll go over here and talk to these folks about this very important subject. Because there is no more important subject on the face of the earth. If we can't hold the family together, we really can't hold civilization together. Because the bonds of civilization happen to be the family. In Malachi 2.15 it says, And did not he make one, you say, wherefore? Because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet she is thy companion, and she is the wife of thy covenant. <laughs> the wife of thy covenant. When a young man marries a young woman, a family is born. That's, that's what a family is. The most intimate of all human relationships is a marriage of one man to one woman. Uh, in my natural life, I soon learned, <laughs> number one, that I was a male and that I was born that way. I learned that a male human is not what, is what makes them different uh, from a, a female, that they are absolutely different. I learned that my mother was female and that my father was a male. And I learned this very early in babyhood, that the two were different. I learned that my older and younger sisters, Louise, Anna, and Leona, that they were female. I learned that my brothers, Ernest, Houston, Kearney, who were all older than I, that they were male. I soon understood that males, more easily than females, were understood by me. I hope you don't misunderstand that. But I soon understood that. I understood males better than females. I dressed like males, and I became accustomed to it. I learned also that males had a specific toilet in public places, and I hadn't better get them mixed up, even though I was a little fellow, just learning about what it meant. I further learned that a male has several very distinct relations with females, such as he has a mother. He should love her. He should obey her the one that gave him his birth and fed him and clothed him uh, and, and took care of him. And so that he must respect his mother, must love his mother. <clears throat> and he understands that he has another female called a sister. And as she is older, she took care of him when he was a toddler and, and taught him how to walk and how to get around. And uh, if she was younger, then he protected and helped take care of her. Besides a mother and a sister, he had an aunt that he normally began to call Auntie uh, when he was younger, and that this person was the sister of a father or a mother, and was normally a very wonderful person that gave gifts, cuddled you, took care of you, helped spoil you. And then we found out among the females that a male can know is a grandmother, used to call grandma, or sometimes nana, and that this mother is the mother of your father or the mother of your father. And she's grandma, another female. Then we've learned that there is another female, and this one is called a wife. Now, this, this female uh, was created by God to come into Adam's existence and assist him, to bless him, and to help him. And uh, in this female, you don't know until you are an adult and at that point, you become very closely united to this one more than any other person on the face of the earth. After that, you can have a daughter, and that daughter is a jewel from heaven that's given to you. Those are the various types of uh, females uh, that a male can learn to know on the face of this earth. Now, besides this natural relationship with females, there are spiritual relationships. <coughs> there is the mother in the faith. Sometimes we call them a mother in Israel. And they're, they're, they're older women uh, that have, that have uh, learned a lot, that have had a lot of experiences. And this mother in the faith to new converts can <laughs> cuddle him a little bit uh, and say, don't get discouraged and don't quit and don't stop. And I'd be glad to answer your questions. I've already walked down that path and I'm willing to help you and I'm willing to bless you. And, and so a mother in the faith is a very precious person. And then there's also a sister in Christ. And a, and a sister in Christ 
is a person, possibly close to your own age, uh, that has come to know the Lord, walks very elegantly and beautifully before the Lord, has a smile for you, has a word of encouragement for you, and she belongs to another man. And so you are to be very courteous to her and appreciate her because of her Christian integrity. Now, respect is commanded of every male for all of them. But now I have some, some information for you. But sex is forbidden with most of the females that you know. For example, the Bible says in Leviticus 18 and 6, uh, these words, None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness, for I am the Lord. So he says that any person who is near of kin to you, you can love them, you can appreciate them, but you are not to have sex with them. Now, when you disobey the laws of God, you get into trouble. When you disobey the laws of God, you have sorrows. When you come against God, you come against the one that created the whole universe. It's like coming against the laws of gravitation. You can scream at gravitation all you want to, but when you jump off of a barn, you're going to hit the ground because gravitation has the most power. And you, you, you'll find the same with God. You can't just come against God. You say, who are those that are close of kin? In Leviticus 18 and 7, it says, The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. This, this, this thing of nakedness, of course, uh, means uh, uh, fornication and, and means uh, that you have sex with them. And he says that you should not do it. She is thy mother, and thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. That is, you should not have sex with your, with your mother. Now, we live in a, a world today of great sadness. I, I heard of a boy just very recently that ran away from home because his mother just kept wanting to have sex with him. And, and he got so tired of it and so weary of it uh, that he just couldn't stand it. And he ran away from home to get away from a woman that was his mother, his own mother, demanding sex of him, and he was a teenager. Now, the Bible says that you should not do that. And it means exactly what it says. And if you try to do it, then you're going to get into a lot of troubles. You cannot have a happy home breaking the laws of God in the area of sex. If you don't keep that part clean and keep it holy and keep it in God's way of doing things, then you will never have a happy home. And it begins right there with your father or your mother. A man is not to have sex with his daughter, and a boy is not to have sex with his mother. And Leviticus 18, 7 and 8 are the words you should read. And then verse 8 uh, of the same chapter of Leviticus says, The nakedness of thy father's wife shall thou not uncover. It is thy father's uh, nakedness. If your father has married another woman and she's not your mother, she's still his wife. You see, you call him stepmother. And God says you cannot, you cannot have intercourse with a woman who has been married to your father. Now, we have some... Uh, stupid things in our world that we live in today. Uh, there, there are people. There's a young man that marries a woman, and his father marries the daughter. I mean, I know of it personally. Uh, you, you got a, you got a situation on your hand there, especially when they, when, when they get together. Uh, you, you've got moms and dads and moms and dads, and you got a. You get outside of doing things God's way, and all you're going to have is what we have in this country today, and that's trouble. Now, God does not want you to have marital problems. God wants you to have marital bliss. He wants you to have happiness. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to have peace. He does not want divorced homes. My friends, uh, you, our whole economy today is suffering, is suffering from this. If, if a child born today in this country, he only has a 50-50 chance of ever living with his mom and his dad together. Now, now, that's a dreadful thing to say of a country that calls itself Christian. He only has a 50-50 chance. About 65% of all mothers with children in this country uh, work, work and, and, and send their kids into these uh, little day nurseries. 65% of them. And now, now, <laughs> that child is not getting the right love and the right appreciation. And I don't want you to, you know, get angry at me and turn me off or anything. I'm only telling you what makes a happy home. And, and you must understand these things. But especially in this sex-crazed world, you've got to know if you don't respect what God has said, you're going to have nothing but sorrow and troubles and pains and heartaches. There is no other way to have it. 
You cannot uncover the nakedness of your father's wife. It doesn't matter whether she's younger than you are, or older than you are, or whatnot. Even though she's a stepmother, she ha you have no right to touch, her, to touch her sexually. And then we find in Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 9 these words. It says, The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or the daughter of thy mother. Now, he, he is making... He is making a, a double situation here. Well, look at the rest of the verse. When, whether she is born at home or, or, or born abroad, even their nakedness shalt thou not uncover. Now, he is saying, uh, your own sister, you know, uh, born of your mom and dad, uh, you should not commit sex with her. And, uh, and there you need strong parents. Uh, if you have boys and girls in your home, and if, if that mother is not watchful, uh, th th those kids will get off together, and they, they will have sex together. Uh, you, uh, some parents are real stupid, you know. They're the last people in town that understand their own kids. And they're the last people in town, after the police comes, that knows how bad they are. Uh, everybody else knows it, but they haven't found it out yet. And you, you've got to know your family, and you've got to love your family, but the beginning of a happy home is right sex relationships. And that is you and your wife, and nobody else, just you and your wife, and then have respect respect uh, for women that your father marries if your mother dies and he marries another woman to have respect for her that you never come near her uh, to have sex with her and then with a sister if she is born of you of your father and your mother then he goes on to say if she is a stepsister and whether she's born in the home or whether whether she's brought in later born abor born abroad uh, you, you know, sometimes a family gets divorced, and, and uh, here's a young man, 15. The father goes and marries a woman. He has a daughter, 15. Well, you two 15-year-olds can't get together and have sex. He says, whether she's born in the home or born abroad, she is a, a sister, and it is forbidden for you to have sex with her. And if you break that law, uh, you will hurt her. Uh, you could never imagine the people that have come into my office uh, crying out for help in, in, a, in a matter like this where they've had incest in the home and either from a father or a stepfather or a brother or a stepbrother. The, the mark never leaves them. Uh, the, the degradation never leaves them. The sadness never leaves them. In, in Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 11, it, it makes it stronger. It says, the nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter. <laughs> yeah, the Bible knows you. It's got your number real good. The begotten of thy father, she is thy sister. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Now, you see, that's very strong that if your father marries another woman and, and she already has children, God says she is your sister. You know, God specifically makes the relationship strong and that you are not to have sex with her. In Leviticus 18 and 10, it says, the nakedness of thy son's daughter. Now, now we, we live in a crazy world. You better believe it. Out of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for, they, for, for theirs is thine own nakedness. You must protect your children, your little children. If it's on a woman's side, that grandson, you're not to have sex with him. And on the father's side, that beautiful granddaughter, uh, so lovely and so wonderful and so open-hearted that grabs you and loves you and kisses you and hugs you, you are not to have sex with that little girl. And if you do, you've broken the laws of God and you will suffer for it, not only in this life. If you don't get forgiveness, you'll suffer forever in eternity because you will never go to heaven, uh, never find peace, never find joy in living a life like that. Now, maybe you didn't know that was in the book. But I'm reading you directly from your Bible, that you are not to have sex with your, with your granddaughter. And Leviticus 18 and 15 says, Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. If your son ha has married a young lady, you are never to go into that house and have, and have uh, sex with your son's wife. She is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. So your daughter-in-law is, is something you should never touch. Uh, you, you should uh, love, appreciate, and stand for her, bless her, and love her, but you should never stoop to having sex uh, with her. Your in Leviticus 18 and 16, it says, Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. <laughs> of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. And so, uh, if you uh, two boys and you both get married, you are to never to go into the home, never to go into the home of that brother of yours and commit fornication with his wife. Now, this is done throughout the world today. 
and 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 I, I'll be teaching you in another lesson that when you have a home, you keep men out of it and and keep women out of it. When you start having star borders around there, and and it and it's your brother, and and you are out of the house, uh, then your wife becomes open open property for him to uh, get himself involved in. And you just better not do it. And some of you people, you have vacations and you go off and mess around and make love to each other and change wives. And the first thing you know, you've messed up your homes and, uh, and you're divorced. And I've known of such sad conditions, such sad conditions. I, I've, I've known of two brothers marrying two sisters and they end up divorcing and swapping. The one brother got the other sister and the other sister got the other brother. Now, the, the reason for that was they didn't keep their home sacred. I mean, I've, I know the family. Uh, we, they didn't keep their home sacred. In your home, it is sacred. Uh, if you're a woman, uh, you, you keep out other women that could come there and take your husband away from you. And if you're a man, you keep out other men. I don't care who they are. Your best friend will be the first one that will grab your wife and make love to her when you turn your back. And so know it and have intelligence and hold and keep your family. That is your sister-in-law. In fact, as I, I grew up and I learned the wonder of a family, I, I really, I learned the family in its highest and best. We had a glory, we had seven children, boys and girls, and, and we really loved one another. We all ate at the same table. Uh, we live in a world today where it don't average, they tell me two times a week that the whole family eat together anymore. Uh, that is a, an abomination. When I grew up, our family ate together every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We ate every meal together every day. And at, at that table, brother, was where you got wise. And yeah, I tell you, everybody was talking, everybody was telling you what they had learned, and it was a great place. So it, in our family, as I grew up, uh, we ate at one table. We helped each other in work and in play. Uh, I, I had to help my sisters clean the house. Uh, they had to help me bring in the wood. I mean, we were a helping family. I mean, not because we wanted to, we were made to do it. We, we grew up knowing that we should help one another. And not only work, but we played together. Uh, we, the, the, the girls played rough like the boys, and the boys messed around playing like the girls. And so uh, we were a family that played together. And, and in doing this, we became a well-adjusted family. I, as I told you in the first part of this talk, I knew what a female was. And I knew what all kinds of females were. And I knew how to respect one female from another female. And I knew what males were, because I had a father, and I had uncles, and I had brothers, and I had cousins. And so, uh, and we lived to where we could see one another, and I learned exactly what made up a whole, complete, and happy family. And we want you to know exactly the same thing. And as we grew up this way, we also learned to stick together. We learned to protect one another. And, and the Bible was what taught us just exactly how to do it. I knew the acute discipline of a displeased father. I knew the tender understanding of an adoring mother. I had an older and younger sisters and three older brothers. I knew my grandparents on both sides of the family. I had uncles and I had aunts and I had cousins and I knew them all well. And then after I was married, I came to create my own new family under God. It has been a beautiful experience. It has been something that, uh, that has been wonderful. There was just me. And then when, when, when I was married to Louise, then there were two. And, and then our three sons. And then our three daughters-in-law. And now our... Our, our five children, <laughs> our grandchildren, five grandchildren. And so when we talk to you about holding your family together, don't think of us as being unique. And, and don't think of us as saying, well, nobody can do it but you. Honey, I believe anybody can do it, don't you? I believe so, especially if they know the Lord. That's right. That, that's the thing, that that's as thing. you uh, commit everything to him, why it can be that way. That's right. Now, everybody, everybody... Everybody's got to know that we're not particular, that we're just average, and that, uh, and that we just believe that God loves you and cares for you as much as he does anybody. And I'm going to bless you right now. Uh, now, Lord, I, I knew a wonderful family life, and I thank you for it. And I had all the different components 
of the human family living right with us. So we knew every portion of a human family. We weren't deprived in any place of a full family. And, and I say, I want to thank you for that. And we have a full family right now with, with, with Louise and I and our children and our daughters-in-law and our grandchildren. We have a full and a happy family, and we want to thank you for it. Make it possible that everyone watching me this moment shall be so blessed of God by making right decisions, spiritual decisions, and living for God. And we believe it in Jesus' name.